so that people would realize indeed uh, the sit true situation of widows in Nigeria particularly. I understand that Faith Ademe is on the line. She also works with um, uh, widows. Um, good morning, Faith. Can you hear me? Do I have faith? Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, um, I know that you, you work uh, closely with widows. And often uh, we hear that uh, widows are being maltreated and even ostracized. Some of the challenges our very own uh, uh, um, correspondent here is uh, trying to talk about, which is what the things she experienced, uh, the experiences that the widows shared. Why do you think that this continued to happen? Because you have a direct or close contact with such with widows. Why is this a reality in Nigeria? Do I have faith? Did you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. So I said often we hear widows are being ostracized and even maltreated by members of their family. A Felicity here, who is our own uh, correspondent, in fact, is just trying to highlight a particular incident where the woman doesn't even, she, does, she still lives in deplorable condition and don't have access to so many things, you know. So they are being maltreated. In your opinion, as someone who works with them, why do you think this continue to happen? Well, um, I, I, would, I would like to say the different strokes um, for different folks. Um, widows don't have all the same problems, but yes, a commonality, like I observe, um, is in the area of neglect, being ostracized. Um, neglect can be um, neglect by a few loved ones, and, and this, form, this, from my experience, happens because given the period of mourning, people naturally visit to condole with the widow, but oftentimes... Um, people have to return to their own lives and um, their own problems as well. And yes, there are instances where the widow naturally ostracizes herself. Um, she does this intentionally to be safe. Um, no, she's become vulnerable to society. And let's face it, our society is harsh to sole parents. Uh, what's that she is a widow? A reason this happens is majorly that she, the widow, has lost her head. That is um, the authority. Right. Uh, having said that, what, what do you? What are the kind of support you think widows need uh, in Nigeria? Uh, you know, um, thinking of the kind of pressures that they face on a daily. All right. Well, it can be said that no group is more affected um, by the scene of a mission than widows. Um, the population are painfully absent from statistics today. That population, like never before. Um, have challenged many conventional views and assumptions about in the courts the invincible group. Uh, when I talk about widowhood and the resultant effect of spousal loss, I talk as someone who isn't just directly affected. I lost my husband. I am still a widow. But as somebody aspiring to see a change in the narrative of widowhood, um, because the narrative has evolved from what we saw as um, that fallen, aged, indigent woman a woman seeking to feed herself and her household. We are in the 20th decade to see a shift in the demography of widow as young within the ages of 18, 45 and 50. I am about 45 years old. I'm an educated woman. Educated young women are being affected today. Women with strong, amiable and social leaning. This becomes a tough call for those who should administer care or support. My area of focus is women within the demography because they're usually not captured. Um, they also, uh, they wouldn't want to come forward. Widows naturally don't want to come forward. No woman wants to be tagged a widow. They are willing to come forward. Um, they, they wouldn't want to come forward. They, they um, have psychosocial and psychosexual needs. The bane of my advocacy actually has been inclusivity. The psychosexual areas that I have... Con Faith, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have to end it there in the interest of time. And I see her Felicity with me. Uh, Felicity, finally, before you go, just tell us in a second the challenges that you face uh, having to do that. No, but, but I, I want to quickly react to something she said about widows not wanting to come forward. I, I beg to defer that there's most of them 
are willing to come forward. Mm -hmm. But to what purpose? These ones that opened up and told us their story, of what effect has that story and of course been? The have, they, have their life uh, has their lives changed really mm -hmm. these are the questions we should be asking it's not a, it's not a it's not a, a matter of widows not wanting to come out it's when they do what help do they get mm -hmm. um, the, the challenges I think basically for most of them is for grace in particular I want to mention grace again because um, um, her story is something that needs to change. She still lives in that condition. Her children are still not in school. Uh, she barely survives on a daily basis. And the piece of land she has is um, somebody's threatening to take it away from her. And there's literally nothing uh, uh, she can do. So um, I want to, if we can get one person at a time, mm -hmm. you know, lift her situation, and then the possibility for others um, is endless. One we do at a time. Thank you so very much, Felicity, as a week uh, for shedding more light on that story. And please remember that you can still watch the whole video on our YouTube page on Plus TV Africa. Mm -hmm.